Hi, Steve Arnold here from Post Processing Mastery, and in this video, I'm showing you how to get started using luminosity masks in Photoshop with three practical examples that teach you how to create luminosity masks that isolate the shadows, highlights, and midtones separately so that you can make precise and focused adjustments to all of your images in Photoshop from this point forward. If you want to download my free PDF guide, an intro to luminosity masking, which includes sample raw files and more masking examples, then click the link in the video description below. Or in the meantime, stick with me until the end of this video, because you're about to learn three techniques that you'll be able to start using immediately, even if you've never used luminosity masking before. So with that said, let's crack on with example number one, how to create masks that isolate the highlights in your images. So we're just going to use this image that's on screen here at the moment uh, for all three examples. Uh, it's just one that I've kind of partially processed uh, before hitting record. Uh, so I'll just dive straight into showing you how to actually create a, uh, a mask that isolates the highlights. Uh, and this is so that we can make adjustments that focus only on the, uh, the brighter parts of your image. So actually first let's create the adjustment. So let's say for example, we wanted to add a curves adjustment uh, that was going to brighten the highlights in the image. So it's going to take those brightest parts of the sky and make them even brighter. The first thing that you can do is, well, add this curves adjustment and then push it up to brighten the whole image. Now, obviously the whole image has been affected because we haven't done anything in the layer mask yet. So for now, let me just turn this layer off and come into the channels panel where all the magic happens. So the first thing we actually need to do is create a selection that isolates the highlights. And the way that we do that is on the keyboard, you're going to hold command on a Mac or control on a PC and then click the RGB channel. And once you've done that, you can see the, um, the marching ants around the image. And that's kind of indicating that a selection has been made. And more often than not, it will kind of represent what the, uh, you know, what the selection is going to roughly look like. Um, however, you know, the more you dive into this, the more the selection might actually just look completely random. So just a bit of a heads up for the future there. Um, but once you've made that selection, the next thing you're going to do is click this icon down here to save the selection as a new channel. And when I do that, we can see we've got alpha one now that's appeared in the channels panel. So I'm going to click on alpha one and that's going to load it into view. And what this uh, gives us is a black and white version of the image where the brightest parts of this channel that we're looking at here, so the whiter parts of the image here, correspond to the brightest parts of the actual image. So just to keep things uh, all tidy and easy to understand, let's double click on the Alpha 1 channel name and then just rename it to Highlights 1, for example. Okay, so that's done. I can deselect the active selection by pressing Command or Control D on the keyboard. And now what we need to do is get this channel to appear in the Curves 3 adjustment layer, uh, layer mask. So let's turn the layer on. And the way that we're going to get that channel to appear in the, uh, in the layer mask here is by using the Apply Image. Um, option here under image in the menu. So I'm going to click apply image. And now these are already configured to the right um, settings because uh, once you use it once, uh, once you use this tool once, it kind of saves and remembers the last settings you used. But if you're doing this for the first time, what you're going to want to do is choose the merged option here from the drop down uh, next to where it says layer. And we're going to now in the channels, uh, in the channel dropdown, we're going to select that channel that we just created and renamed called Highlights 1. And blending, you can keep this as normal, or if it's already set to something else, just change it to normal. And we're going to click OK. And when we do that, we can see now that the, uh, the layer mask for Curves 3 has got what appears to be a black and white version of the image loaded into the layer mask. And that is basically what it is, but it technically is the highlights one channel that we created earlier 
loaded directly into the layer mask. And so the effect of this now is that this brightening curve only affects the highlights. So when I disable and re-enable it, we can see this is with it off and this is with it on. So only the brighter parts of the image are getting brighter. And just to show again what that looks like without the mask, I can shift click on the mask itself to disable it. And so this is the curves adjustment without any layer mask being applied. And now this is with the highlights um, selection loaded into the mask. Now, if we want the mask to, um, to isolate the highlights a little bit more, so let me just click on that again. Uh, so if we want it to isolate the highlights a little bit more, so for example, too much of this sky is kind of uh, a light gray um, in the mask, then what we can do is create another channel that isolates the highlights even further. So let's do that now. Uh, let's go back into the channels panel and let's load the highlights one selection, uh, sorry, the highlights one uh, channel as a selection. So command or control, click on highlights one and that's gonna load it as a selection now. Next, what we need to do is intersect the uh, currently active selection with the highlights one channel. Uh, so we're basically intersecting it with itself. Now, if the terminology is a bit confusing, then don't worry about it. I guess, um, you know, just as long as you remember the steps, then it's kind of okay. Uh, so what we're gonna do on the keyboard is hold Command Option Shift on a Mac or Control Alt Shift on a PC. And then we're gonna click Highlights 1 again. And when I do this, if you just keep your eye on the marching ants on the selection in the main window, you'll see that it kind of focuses further in on that brightest part of the sky. And so let's save this now as a channel. So save this selection as a channel. And now we've got an alpha one channel that's just appeared here. And we can see there the rest of the image is darker. The, uh, and, and the brightest parts of the sky have become more isolated from the rest of the image. So let's rename this one to highlights two now. Okay, that's great. And now let's come over into the uh, curves three adjustment and use the apply image tool to load highlights two into the mask. Click OK. And now we can see it's a bit more of a subtle effect because less of the sky is, uh, is being affected by this adjustment. And now let's just play around with this a little bit just to sort of show you how I can push this really far to the top and really brighten that brightest part of the sky. The top corners here are staying relatively uh, the same uh, and the foreground is virtually untouched and that is all thanks to what this uh, layer mask is doing, this luminosity mask. So, okay, that's great for isolating the highlights, but what if we wanna isolate the shadows? So in this example, what happens if we wanna actually brighten the foreground and not the sky? And so that brings us conveniently on to example number two, which is how to create a luminosity mask that isolates the shadows. So let's disable this curves adjustment and we'll, we'll reuse it in a minute, but I'll just disable it for now while we're creating the shadow mask and come over into the channels panel. Now, the first step in creating a, um, a shadow mask is creating a highlights mask. And so we've already done that in the previous step. So what I wanna do now is just duplicate this and let's rename it to shadows one. Now, obviously, it currently looks exactly the same as highlights one, uh, but that's okay because all we need to do to turn a highlight mask or a highlights channel into a shadows channel is invert it. So we can do that on the keyboard with command or control I. And so the whole thing flips around and now what was dark is now a light and what was light is now dark. Now the only problem with this particular shadows um, channel is that it doesn't isolate the uh, the foreground as much as I want it to because the sky is all still quite light and even the sea there and the clouds are all quite light um, and I want the curves adjustment now to really mainly just affect the very foreground you know the grass so 
what we can do to, to make that happen is do the same thing as we did to get highlights two. We can actually uh, do the same thing now with shadows one to create a shadows two selection or channel. So let's load shadows one as a uh, as a selection. Command or control click on shadows one. And now command option shift on a Mac or control alt shift on a PC and click on shadows one again. And we can see the selection has kind of focused a bit more in on the uh, shadows and actually it's not as obvious as with the highlights. So um, yeah, just as long as, as long as you notice a change, you'll know that pretty much the right thing has happened. Uh, so let's now save this as a new channel. Alpha one has been created. So let's click on that and rename that to shadows two. What we could do if we wanted to dive deeper into the uh, shadows still, we could just keep repeating that process of intersecting the uh, each shadows uh, channel or selection with itself to dive even deeper into the uh, into the shadows. But we won't go into that right now. Um, we'll just use what we've got in this example. So coming back into the layers panel, I'm going to enable the curves three adjustment. Now let's click on the mask again, click on image, apply image, and this time in the drop down, we're going to choose shadows two. Uh, click OK. And we can see now that the shadows two channel has been loaded into the uh, curves three adjustment layer layer mask. And now that brightening effect of the curve is mostly affecting the shadows in the image. So this is much more of a typical adjustment that you're going to be sort of wanting to make on a regular basis, uh, you know, taking those darker parts of the image and brightening them up. So there we go. That is the basics of how to create a luminosity mask that isolates the shadows. Now, again, that brings us nicely on to example number three, where we're going to create a selection or a channel or a layer mask that isolates the midtones. So basically everything in between the shadows and the highlights. Now to do that, we're back into the channels panel. And the first step of this process is to click on the RGB channel and then select all. So that you can do that with either command or control A, or you can just go select all in the, uh, in the menu there. And now this selection has uh, basically selected the entire image. Now what we need to do to turn this into a midtone selection is subtract the highlights and then subtract the shadows so that what we're left with is the midtones. So let's do that by using the, um, the more kind of focused in uh, versions of these channels that we created a minute ago. So the highlights too, which is like a more extreme highlight selection and the shadows too, which is a more extreme shadow selection. We're going to subtract these two uh, selections or channels from the RGB which is what the current selection is of. Okay, so the steps to do that are on the keyboard. We're gonna hold Command and Option on the Mac and on a PC, Control, Alt. And you'll see, if I, I'm just wiggling the mouse there just to bring it to your attention, you'll see that the, uh, the mouse pointer has changed to a finger with a little minus symbol. So you'll know that that's the correct key combination on the keyboard when you see that minus symbol. So that's just without and that's with the command option or control alt held in. So now I'm going to click on highlights two to subtract highlights two. And we're going to do the same thing for shadows two. Click on there to subtract shadows two. And now this current selection, we're going to save it as a new channel. Alpha one has appeared there. So let's rename this to midtones one. And if we look at that, if I just disable or uh, deselect the selection, what we're looking at here is kind of a weird pasty looking image. But what it is, is um, it's a selection or it's a, it's a channel that includes all of the image data except for the brightest parts and except for the darkest parts. So whereas in a shadows selection or shadows channel, the black parts of this channel are the bits that are not being included 
in the uh, in the channel or, in, or when we use it in a mask in the selection and the same with the highlights here so in isolating the highlights we're excluding the shadows so those excluded parts are black so in the midtones everything is kind of middle gray-ish except for the darkest and except for the brightest so what that allows us to do when we come back into the channels into the layers panel and click on the layer mask of our adjustment layer when we use the apply image and then choose the midtones click OK then this is actually going to allow us to create some more extreme um, adjustments than using either the shadows or the highlights because whatever we do here we're not going to overexpose the very brightest highlights and we're not going to underexpose the darkest shadows so this is a great example for when you want to sort of increase contrast in your image so you can create an s curve there um, and you can be pretty confident that you're not going to make shadows too dark or highlights too bright and that's really the biggest benefit of using a mid-tone selection like this now something that can help you actually create all of these channels really really quickly like in two or three seconds um, is a feature that I just added into my uh, luminosity masking panel in the last couple of days so yeah if you've got my panel or if you want to get it I'll put a link in the description um, but when you do and when you install it you'll see under the 16-bit masking section there's a create all button and what this does if I hit that create all button within a couple of seconds it's going to create five highlights channels so each one isolating um, you know, brighter and brighter highlights. It's going to create five shadows channels, like so. And then it's got five midtones channels. So here, um, you know, various midtones channels, similar to what we just created um, in the uh, in the walkthrough. Uh, and how you can actually use those really really quickly is with this little grid of letters and numbers here so let's say for example we wanted to load the midtones one uh, channel directly into the uh, into the layer mask of this adjustment once we've created all those channels with that button there we can just hit the m1 for midtones one and it loads it in uh, if we want midtones five we can just hit the m5 if we want shadows two then we can hit s2 shadows three four highlights one two three four and yeah what that gives is actually a really quick and easy way of not only creating those channels and saving time but just it bypasses that whole uh, apply image uh, step so that you can just really quickly at the click of a single button just see the effect that each channel is going to have on your adjustment when loaded into the layer mask so that was something uh, for those of you watching this who have my panel um, you know, just something I wanted to show you real quick just to kind of show you the steps that we're actually bypassing with this uh, with this new section here this 16-bit masking section in the panel and for those of you who uh, who don't have the panel then again like I said I'll just stick a link in the description below the video and you can go and download that if you want otherwise you can take these three examples of using luminosity masks the manual way uh, and you know go and start using them today and experiment with using them on different types of adjustments you know any kind of layer that can have a mask attached so any adjustment layers so anything here so brightness contrast levels curves all of this the same exact yeah you know, it works in the exact same way as what I just showed you here but I was only using a curves adjustment in the examples um, and you can also use it for blending exposures as well. If you've got multiple exposures where things haven't moved in between the exposures, then you can blend them to create high dynamic range images using these masking techniques. So with that said, let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video and uh, you know, give it a thumbs up if you did. And if you want to be notified by YouTube every time I publish a new video like this, then remember to subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell notification icon. Again, thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. I'll see you next time.